Hello everyone, welcome back to our Porsche restoration video series. Uh, today we're going to talk about sanding our first coat of K36 and uh, what we can expect out of it and uh, where do we go from here once we've got it sanded up. I'm going to try and get up real close with some of this video today and show you in real, real close detail what you want to be looking for and what you want to try and look out for. Okay, so uh, I got the hood put back on there. I don't have the struts on there at this time, mainly just for video purposes. You can see here I've got the struts pulled out, and it's sitting below plane of our uh, our front fascia there. Uh, but I put those struts back in there. It's going to pop right back up flush. Um, one of the details on these cars, uh, these fenders are actually sticking up. Uh, higher than our front fascia. So what that's going to do with our hood line is we either got to follow the front fascia to, uh, to plane out or we've got to follow the fender line here in this area and try and plane that out. You can't really do both at the same at the same time because one of them is a little bit higher than the other. So what I've done is I've taken the back edge flush with the fascia, um, kind of sanded those two together and then this front transition area um, just kind of a funny area on these cars. You just kind of kind of blend it in as you go down um, As you come down here uh, Things should start planing out and coming back into line for you Down here you can see where I've burned through that edge there um, Okay, so one thing I want to show you while I'm down here. Let's look at these uh, tabs I mentioned these on our last mock-up video see the holes in there I've enlarged quite a bit um, these are the tabs that are a problem if you want to try and level out your horn drill and your turn signal you want to open those holes up a little bit best way to do that is with a step bit um, just drop it in one tier at a time until you get to a size that that's going to get you your clearances and your leveling that you need to get out of there you want to try and line this this hood up here with your horn grill you might have to do a little reshaping there uh, to get that to line up with your horn grill but you'll catch that in your mock-up and then you can tune the hood up uh, okay so also um, I'm doing this in the morning light because morning light really is where I'm doing my sanding you see as the uh, lights bouncing across there got a good uh, cross sanding pattern and this pattern this technique um, this is something you want to use with the sanding tool. You don't want to do this by hand. You want to do this technique uh, everywhere on the car from the smallest area to the biggest area. The technique's always going to be the same. So you always want to try and use a tool to do your sanding. This is our fender here that was giving us some issues. As you can see now it's all sanded up and everything's tightened up. And actually it's going to look pretty good for us. I don't think we're going to get any more movement out of those layers of fillers and, and primers. Also, you get up close here. You can see our lip is cleaned up pretty good. I think we're going to be able to make that work. So, there's your sanding pattern. And on this layer, what we're trying to do is sand it down as tight to the car as we can get it. You can see some of my uh, epoxy popping through there, and this is good. That's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring that uh, K36 layer as close to our epoxy without going through. You can see just a little bit of bare metal there. That's okay, but uh, got to stop sanding right there. We're not going to get any more depth out of it than that. Um, also, let's look at some of these door gaps now that we're starting to finish it out. Also, um, I'm not using a guide coat while I'm sanding this K36 on this on this coat. The first coat here, I put it on quite heavy with the intention really to sand all of it off or as much of it off as I can get off of there. And the reason we want to do that on the, the roof here, you know, those dimple areas are pretty much gone now. Get this thing to focus. Um, Anyways, you can see across the light there, and our shape is really starting to come around. Um, so I'm not using a guide coat to sand this. 
So I'm really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to continue to shape the car. So if I'm trying to follow a guide coat, that's not necessarily giving me enough information to get this car back into its proper shape. I need to sand this and work this coat, this layer, until I feel like I'm there and I'm going to go way past any guide coat that would be on there. The best way to see this is in a morning sunlight as the light's bouncing across your panel and your sanding. And then also uh, in the evening is a good time to be sanding. Get this stuff up on some horses, take your doors off, lay them flat on the horses, and then you can see as the light bounces across there exactly what you need to sand. So, a little hard to get in there with that camera. Um, but you want to be you want to be pretty close on this. You can see there I put a little bit of uh, body filler in there. That's because I had to pull that lip out a little bit to get those get those gaps to line up. I did that after uh, my primer stage. So you're going to be catching little things here and there throughout each process as you layer and sand and layer and sand. Little things are going to be revealing themselves on the next coat that didn't show up on the previous coat. Um, in this case, we're far enough along now where um, this is pretty thin here. You can actually see my pencil mark where I'm marking off that area. Um, this is not quite going to be deep enough or not quite shallow enough where one little uh, spot prime with K36 is going to get it. Um, so we got some options there. We can either K36 it two or three coats or we can uh, use a putty glaze to, to fill that little deviation or we can use a, a filler um, body filler. Now, I prefer even on these real small areas I actually prefer to use a body filler versus um, a putty glazing because I found with the putty glazing um, they shrink down and, and they shrink for a long time so that thing could still be moving six months from now and I don't want to take any chances on that so um, your, your body fillers are much more stable than your uh, putty glazes. Those glazes really are just best for uh, any kind of lines you might have in there you need to fill um, or pinholes. They're perfect for pinholes because it's a little bit creamier and uh, gets down in those holes whereas the, the Bondo is a little bit more coarse. There are, uh, there are gaps and we're, we're basically sanding these together now. We're, we're doing most of our sanding on the horses but then we're uh, bringing it over, we're mocking it back up again, and we're going to sand these together and get them as close as we can. Now I've got two more coats that are still going to go down on here. Um, we're just about there. It's amazing what you can get out, all the little imperfections on your car uh, with this first layer. So, uh, you know, I'm, my style is a little bit a little bit different than most, not, not too much mainstream going on here. I like to do things a little bit differently than, uh, than what the mainstream players do. Um, a lot of guys would not feel comfortable sanding this without uh, a guide coat, but um, again, I'm trying to get to the truest shape of the car. And if we leave too much material on here, then we're going to lose that. Also, if we leave too much material on here, we're going to end up with some problems. It's going to be very difficult to overcome later in the painting process. You can see this gap here. Uh, we're, we're about where we need to be, even if we had finished paint on there. But we still got a long ways to go. We got more primers to put down. We've got base colors to put down, and we've got a lot of, a lot of top coats, and those are pretty thick. Let's take a look inside here. Sand out the hood. And uh, when you sand this coat down, this is pretty much what it should look like. You're going to see burn throughs um, and that's good. That means you're flattening everything out. Everything's starting to straighten up, looking a lot better. And when you get to your next coat, you're going to see even less of that. Uh, probably by the time you get to your last uh, K36 coat, you will probably not see anything pop through at all. You may get a little something here and there, but uh, not to worry because even if you do get back to bare metal, uh, even on an edge, on your last coat, uh, say you're doing your wet sanding, um, we're still going to put another sealer coat of primer on there. So you have nothing to worry about. Uh, also, let's just look down here. These gaps here too. Um, we got to be careful not to put too much material on those edges. 
So each time we put a layer on, we want to go back and remock it just to make sure we got enough clearance in there. You can see under there, everything's starting to line up good. Uh, two more, two more layers of uh, K36. We'll be able to get this to do pretty much everything we want. Um, okay, so I got a couple areas penciled out. You can see here some orange peel. Bit of orange peel here. This is nothing that we have to worry about or we need to fill. If this area was totally shiny, so when you drag your sanding block over there and you're not seeing any scratches skipping the high spots, if there's if it's just shiny there, you're going to need to fill it. Um, if your sanding block is just barely touching the high spots, then uh, another coat of K36 will uh, will take care of that. So I'm just penciling out my problem areas. These I couldn't quite get out. Um, you can see how close I am, so I can't sand any deeper. I'm, I'm there. And we're going to have to fill that, and I'm going to do that with, uh, with the K36. I'm not going to use any body filler on there. However, if they were shiny, we'd be, we'd be body filling. And before you put any filler on there, or you go to uh, re-spot prime that, um, you're going to want to rough it back up uh, very gently with some 150, clean it real good, damp rag, a little bit of solvent on there, and then reshoot it. Now, for these, I'm not going to reshoot the entire door. The door is in pretty good shape, and I don't want to go back and start adding more material. I just want to fill these areas, and then re-block them down to 150 grit so that we're in perfect plane with everything else going on around it. Once you have everything completely blocked, your cross sanding pattern, is good all the way down. All your highs and lows are taken care of. Um, then you can move on to another complete coat, one good wet coat. And, and uh, if you saw the last video when I shot this, um, I'm not going to try and shoot the whole car in one sitting. I'm going to do one small area at a time to make sure that that is a very wet, smooth, even coat because we're going to get finer and finer with our sanding grits. We need a little bit more shaping to do with our 320. We can't get as much out of that as we can get with this uh, 150 grit, but we can get some. So even on that coat, I'm not going to use a guide coat to sand it. Um, you can use a guide coat, and probably if you don't have a lot of experience on this, wouldn't be a bad idea, but it's not necessarily going to show you that everything is flat and in perfect shape. That's something you just kind of have to feel. You have to a little bit of a feel for it. And... Uh, also, one nice thing about putting all these layers on this car, you're going over this thing over and over again, pretty much get to know, you know what all the lines are, what's got to plane out and line up with what. You'll have a real good feel for it, much better than any, uh, any guide coach you can put on there. Get it nice and round, get it nice and tight to the metal. We don't want a lot of build on here. only build we really want on here is paint and clear coat. This stuff here is just to work out all the issues. Um, okay, so I did some drawing. Uh, I thought I would help you a little bit with um, with our painting. And uh, so I made this little diagram here. You'll refer back to it um, to help you. It's a good idea to have in your mind what's going on with each layer. I'm going to wasp here. <laughs> Look out there, bud. Um, okay, so. Each layer um, has a specific role in how it relates to the paint. So starting from our, uh, our very first layer, we're at bare metal here. Um, we want to do our filling, body shaping. We're going to get that nice and clean to uh, sandblast it and then uh, 80 grit block sanding. Then we move on to our DP epoxy coat. Um, you're going to want to put two wet coats one on top of another. The first coat's going to dry out maybe 15 minutes and then you're going to shoot the other one right directly down on it, getting kind of a chemical bond. Um, I like to let that coat cure for at least one month. Um, you can move faster. They recommend at least a week curing time, but uh, I'm kind of fanatical about things moving around on the car, so uh, the more drying and curing time you give it, the better your paint job's going to be in the end, and really your paint work your paint job is it's all perfected out here. Um, okay, so we move on to our DP coat. We're going to fill our pinholes. Um, 
during that process, and then we're going to sand it. Oh, actually, this fill the pinhole should be on the right before you sand the 150, but it's on the second coat. All right, and then after that's dry, clean it up real good. Uh, then we're moving on to our K36. Look at the bigger picture. This is all the coats that's going to be going down on this car before it's finished. So the yellow highlighted area here, this is where we are right now. This has been curing for about six weeks. Um, it's been about a month minimum before I started sanding on it. I've been sanding for the last couple of weeks. Um, and then that needs to, uh, you can see the star here, this is where we're at. That needs to finish up. You need to be happy with everything, uh, filling anything, touching up anything, any last little things that you see on the car that you don't like. You need to fix it here. This is really, this is really it for fitting things, uh, any kind of last body work, anything that you just not happy with. You want to take care of it here before you move on. All right. Then uh, after we like everything, we're going to go to a a 320 sanding process. This is one coat. This is not two coats stacked on top of each other. We're just going to put one coat on there, one wet coat. I'm going to reduce that probably 5%. Uh, it's still quite warm out here, although I won't be spraying this coat for probably another three or four weeks. It's still just too hot. Um, then we're going to go ahead and uh, block sand that again with our uh, Durablox. This is our Durablox set. Um, and you're going to use all these various blocks, virtually everything in here, to get through this car. Uh, this big one here, I've used this one to sand, sand the doors. And this one works great. Um, when you're using these blocks, whether you're using a small block, skinny block, this long guy, all these blocks, um, you want to have two hands on the block. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to bend the block to the shape of the door, the fender, the roof, any body line that's going on. You're actually trying to bend it. And if you try to sand this with one hand, um, it's a lot more comfortable, but you're gonna you're gonna ruin the um, the bodywork under it. So you've got to stay with two block two hands on the block at all times, and that's from your smallest tool uh, to your biggest tool. And then when you get down to where you can't use a tool anymore, um, then what I do is take this guy. Uh, this is a sticky back. I fold it in half, stick it together, and this makes like almost like a miniature uh, sanding block be able to sand up real nice with that in some tight areas. And then where that guy can't fit in there, then we want to go on to our uh, our Scotch-Brite uh, sanding pads. This is the skinny the skinny ones. This works really good in the uh, nooks and crannies. You want to make sure everything's sanded. All your slick spots are uh, de-shined. You don't want anything shiny on there because the paint is not going to stick to anything shiny. Uh, so let's go back here and look at our uh, our paint. Okay, so then uh, when we get to the next coat, 600, that's a 600 wet sanding. I'm only going to be wet sanding the outside of the car. I'm not going to be wet sanding inside the hood, uh, inside the doors. This can be done. You can get uh, almost achieve the same smoothness with uh, 320 sanding, <clears throat> which is this guy here, and then follow it up with this guy here and all those uh, funny shapes. This is going to do a perfect job and will be plenty smooth enough for uh, finished paint. Okay, so all this from uh, below the pink down, this can all be done and sprayed outside. Once we get to this pink line here, um, then we've got to spray all this in a booth, a booth environment. Um, once we've wet sanded this, I'm going to spray down one thin coat of DP sealer coat, which is our epoxy, but it's reduced. Um, and that's going to take care of any any deviations, any real small micro lines, uh, anything. It's basically going to fill it in and um, and work as a barrier between your base color and um, and your primer below it. Uh, so, and then we're going to move on. We're going to go directly on to that coat. We're not going to sand it. Um, let it cure up for about an hour. Then we're going to go two coats of base color, and we're going to put three to four coats of clear. Uh, depending on what's going on in the booth at that time, how things are turning out. And we're going to wet sand after that. So you can see uh, there's a lot going on throughout this painting process. And you skip any one of these coats or try to shortcut any one of these processes, 
and it's all going to come back on you. It, it really, it just all needs to be done. Each layer has something uh, specific it needs to do to get to our desired uh, polish look right up here at the top. <clears throat> so I might, might refer back to this guy uh, if, if you're wondering where it's all headed. So the next coat, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to be moving along a lot better. Won't take near as long to sand. Um, this guy here, I have not sanded the bumpers yet. I haven't sanded this rear license plate uh, panel. Um, some of the smaller uh, hand, small size pieces, but uh, 20 hours right here just to sand this one coat. 20 hours, so if you're getting it done in like 8 or 10 hours, uh, probably not getting everything. It just takes a long time, and I would recommend doing uh, one piece here, one piece there, uh, inside of a door one day, inside of a ne uh, the next door the next day. Just break it up um, so that it's just not so maddening. It it'll drive you crazy. It's just so labor intensive. But this is where your paint job is, right here. Um, getting this sanded just right is the secret to a good paint job. And really, this, this layer right here is the most important layer of everything to get your paint to turn out. And really the secret to the perfect paint job, if there is such a thing, but the secret would be is just knowing when to stop. Just sand it down until you're there and then you stop. And that's going to get you get you a real nice body shape. Okay, I just want to show you a couple more things uh, and then uh, we'll move on. Tell you where we're going to go with this car before we pull the fenders off. Um, got some. Uh, this is our uh, POR15. Uh, this is great. This is a great product for um, inside the car. It's great for underneath the car. It's great for uh, suspension parts, castings, uh, rough castings. This this stuff is almost bulletproof. It's really really tough. It's not going to come off. It's a great seal. Um, and we'll take a look at it here in just a second. But uh, th that, I think, for the money, is the, the best product you can use uh, for sealing up unseen areas, areas that you're not going to see on the car. Um, this POR15 top coat, this is supposed to go down. Let's see, I'm losing my paper here. Um, this is supposed to go down on top of this if you've got something that's going to be exposed to ultraviolet light. Um, but I wouldn't waste your time with it. It's about $25 a can. I wouldn't give you two dollars for it. Uh, don't use it. You'll get yourself into trouble and end up having to take it all off and re-sand with something else or re-spray with something else. Uh, here's my guide coat I'll be using. I'll be using this only on my uh, 600 grit finishing coat. Um, nitrile gloves. You're going to want boxes of these. Um, really, you need to be wearing gloves on this project from about right after we have done putting the filler on all the way to the top. Um, you really want to try to resist touching anything on the car with bare hands. Um, resist the urge to want to feel how smooth it is. It, it really, you don't need to feel it uh, when you get this far. After you've done body work, um, you're good. You, everything else, your tools, your eyes, um, your burn through marks, this is going to tell you everything you need to know, whether you're there or not, whether it's smooth enough or not. Um, so please uh, try to refrain from touching it, even though it's it's uh, very tempting. Uh, but you could put oils in there. Uh, they get down in these little sanding scratches. You know, they're only uh, they're shallow, but they get stuck in there. I wouldn't rely 100% on your uh, painting preps to get them out. You could run into problems. So um, try to make a habit of when you're sanding the car, sand with gloves. Uh, working with the car, picking up panels, moving them around the shop. You want to wear your gloves, and you just go through boxes of those. Now let's take a look inside here, see what's going on. So we're getting ready to uh, pull the fenders off and put this guy in a rotisserie. You can see I've got everything stripped out down to bare metal inside. Pull those uh, pedals out of there here shortly. Best way to get those is from underneath. That's why they're not out of there yet. Uh, anyway, strip it all down as best you can to bare metal. Here's, we've done some POR15. This is uh, directly right on, right after we sandblast, we put this on, and you're good. That is going to do everything you want. You're never going to have any problems with that. And then, of course, we're going to be dynamatting and upholstering over the top of this. Um, 
that'll get get you what you want uh, as far as a good coating in there um, in, in this floor too I mean this is this looks good you could probably treat this with some rust treatment and be good to go but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and blast it just because I want to get it as, uh, as clean as possible so there we are with the inside the inside of the doors here I'll sand it up that's pretty much what it'll look like all right anything else I want to cover here oh another good idea is to have a car cover whether you're working in a garage uh, outside environment um, I get these on eBay they're about fifteen dollars your disposable car cover uh, work perfect for for what you're doing try and keep your car covered up because you never know what's flying through the air some silicone somebody's armor all in their car down the street this stuff's landing on there it's, it's going to be real bad when you go to paint it um, anyhow uh, throw away car cover is a good idea um, two hands on your sanding blocks at all times lots of gloves uh, dry coat I would reserve until you're done shaping your car and just save that for your final coat um, I got this tool here. This is a uh, broad knife, straight edge. It's the straightest thing I could think of to show you. Um, so if we look down the hood here, I'm going to show you one little area. Just getting some good lighting. Some areas, some orange peel. This area right here, I'm going to shoot that with another coat to try and get that out. This is not deep enough to be filled. You can see right up against the edge there, it didn't quite come out. Um, but but if I did if I tried to just catch it on the next coat I don't think we would get it we really need to uh, tune this up and then uh, blend it in with the uh, with the block sander and then shoot reshoot the entire hood for our, our 320 go around and show you how, how thick that is so there is I got the sunlight coming on the one side it's, you almost can't see through that that's a straight edge, um, but it's going to be a problem on your paint job. You, you got to take care of it. You got to build that up, or it will show. Um, you can almost not get a piece of paper under this tool. That's how thin that layer is. Um, but it's got to be built up. It's a hollow in there, and it'll show in your final paint. So it's real important that everything get worked out. You can find everything here in good lighting. Thing. You can see a little bit right here, a little bit of orange peel. So anyhow, that's it. Uh, try not to bore you too much with all these details. I try to cover as much as I can. Uh, hopefully, he's got some useful tips in there for you. There's a lot of labor in here. You don't, don't want to try and overlook something. Um, so that's it for now. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, I'm going to pull these doors off. I'm going to um, strip it down, pull the fenders off, and build a, uh, a home-style rotisserie, and we're going to start going at the bottom of this car. Um, I'm not going to start doing that, though, until I get um, another coat of K36 on there um, to help protect it while I'm working with it. So I don't want to really be muscling this thing around in a sanded state. I want to get another coat on there to seal it, work with the car, do my sandblasting, and then after all that's done and cleaned up, we'll go back and sand that at 320 and move on. Uh, so at this point, really, I'm going to try and catch up the bottom side and all the areas, all the stuff in here that's been, that's been uh, straggling. So good luck with your sanding. Uh, be patient with it. It takes a long time to, to get it. Um, but that, that first sanding on this K36 is so important. This is where you're going to get the shape of the car 100% right here. Your most accurate shape is in this layer. Try to remove as much as you can until you bottom out, um, and then you're ready for the next coat. Trying to make some progress. All right, well, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.